members. And while question one stands in the name of Claire Curran, it is to the chairperson of the Transport and Industrial Relations Committee. That chairperson, David Bennett, I understand, is absent from the chamber. The question is therefore, therefore postponed until next sitting day. I remember, and that brings to a close questions for oral answer. I remember I uh, have received letters from the Honourable Trevor Mallard and Dr Russell Norman seeking to debate understanding Order 380, the Government's application to the Rugby World Cup Authority for an extension to the Queen's Wharf Fan Zone Festival and Showcase Event area. This is an event of recent occurrence for which there is ministerial responsibility. The Government's application was made yesterday. Ordinarily, such an application might not justify an urgent debate on the grounds. The urgent debate procedure is a means of holding the government to account where decisions have been made. However, as I indicated yesterday, this is an important and controversial matter. There is a significant element of urgency. Where there is no other parliamentary means for debating an urgent matter in the reasonably foreseeable future, this is a relevant consideration for the Speaker in considering whether a matter requires the urgent attention of the House. Given the element of urgency, I consider that the matter does now require the immediate attention of the House. I therefore give priority to the first application I have received, that from the Honourable Trevor Mallard. I call upon him to move that the House take note of a particular case of recent occurrence. Uh, Mr. Mr Speaker, I so move. Uh, Mr Speaker, National's sudden decision to take control of the waterfront uh, is, in my belief, an admission that they have failed to ensure the security and safe passage of Kiwi fans and international visitors uh, on the Rugby World Cup uh, opening night. Uh, Mr Speaker, it is obvious to all of us that the focus of the government has been on photo opportunities, on smiling, on waving, on making speeches I think even you would describe as inept to millions of people, but not to focus at all on the details that are important uh, as far as safety, security and related matters are concerned. Uh, Mr Speaker, I think all of us know that last Friday was a debacle and we will get into the reasons for that uh, as the debate goes on. But what we are seeing now, I think, can fairly be described as damage control uh, and the covering of some relatively exposed butts. Uh, Mr Speaker, John Key and his ministers have let rugby fans down. They have damaged our reputation enormously internationally. All around the world we've seen the pictures being shown of New Zealand unable to organise, uh, Mr Speaker, what might be described as a piss-up in a brewery. Mr Speaker, the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister who gave an absolute guarantee that it would run smoothly is the one whose butt is most exposed at the moment and he has given Murray McCulley the job to try and cover it up. Uh, Mr Speaker, we have still not had from the Minister of Transport any assurance whatsoever that the transport issues will be resolved. In fact, he has reversed the recommendations of the Minister for the Rugby World Cup and recommended to people that they drive their cars to Eden Park in the future. He has recommended, he has recommended further use of private vehicles rather than public transport and therefore we're likely to have a reverse of the situation. And Mr Speaker, when I was in government there were, um, I, I, I think it's probably fair to say when I was Minister in charge, there were probably too many groups set up, but there were groups certainly set up that had regard to safety, both uh, international security uh, and physical safety of people. There were groups that were set up to do, to do with transport uh, and, Mr Speaker, there were recommendations by the bucket load. But, Mr Speaker, what we have heard 
from the Honourable Murray McCulley is that he did not deign to read the reports that he received on becoming the Minister in charge of the Rugby World Cup. Uh, and Mr Speaker, I'm, I'm sorry to say that I'm not surprised. Uh, Mr McCulley on some occasions appears to be a person for detail when he's picking the colours of the jacket for the Prime Minister to mince in. He gets down to that level of detail and that level of hands-on control. Hands-on control all over the place we could see on Friday night. We could see that on Friday night, Mr Speaker, but, Mr Speaker, he did not get hands-on as a minister should have and made sure that the policies were in place to ensure the safe running uh, of this cup. Uh, Mr Speaker, we've had repeated assurances from the Prime Minister this, this event would run smoothly. He said, after the economy, it's the thing he wanted to be judged on the most. His ability as Minister of Tourism and Prime Minister to run a smooth Rugby World Cup. Well, the chickens are coming home to roost because what we have is a Prime Minister who did not even ask the Minister of the Rugby World Cup and the Minister of Transport whether they had checked out the relevant policies and the relevant decisions of officials. Uh, Mr Speaker, um, I don't know if all of us um, found particularly comfortable on occasions the approach of the previous Prime Minister, but what we do know is that her ministers would be grilled in Cabinet and in pre-Cabinet over months in advance of major events. I have a feeling that I was asked more questions in the period leading up to the bid being made than the Prime Minister asked his ministers in the three years that they have been responsible for this. Uh, and Mr Speaker, that is the role of the Prime Minister. It is the role of the Prime Minister to lead the team and to check that they're doing the work. That is the core of the role of the Prime Minister, is to do that leadership and to make sure that his ministers are doing the work that they should. And what has become clear is that notwithstanding the dozens of photos that appeared like this one of the Minister for the Rugby World Cup and the Minister for Transport taking credit, taking credit for the transport. What did they do? They went to the railway station, but they didn't ask the questions. They went to the ra railway station, they had their photos taken at the numerous photo opportunities, but the Minister of Transport didn't ask if there were enough buses on. The Minister of Transport didn't ask if there were any trains coming in from the west other than those that were scheduled. He didn't ask the question, are there more trains coming in from the west than come in every other Friday night? No, he didn't ask the question. He, did not, he didn't know that they failed to provide trains going that way. He did not know what would happen if the same thing happened as with a concert previously when there were too many people on the trains and they got jammed up, uh, Mr Speaker, what we had. What we, what we have is the same situation after a series of warnings. His meeting 99 days out from the Rugby World Cup uh, with the Auckland City Council and the transport officials, he got, he got a warning. In fact, he got a long list of warnings the Minister of Transport got but did he ensure that those warnings were followed through and that proper contingency arrangements were put in place? No, Mr Speaker, he did not. And we saw the results of his laziness last Friday night. We saw the results of having two of the ministers who are more concerned about the optics, more concerned about the optics than the facts. Well, Mr Speaker, in the end, in the end, if you don't care about what actually happens, it comes back to bite you on the backside. Not you, Mr Speaker. Bite the Minister of Transport on the backside and his benchmate, the Minister for the Rugby World Cup, who I think has been savaged. He has been savaged 
in his butt as a result of the exposure that has been made clear on this occasion. But what of the Prime Minister, Mr Speaker? Who was, who was the leading person inviting people to come to Party Central? Who was the person who for 18 months said, come down to Party Central and have a great time? Come from around the world to Party Central. Come from around New Zealand to Party Central. Come from around Auckland to Party Central. And then he was surprised when more than 12,000 people came. Well, Mr Speaker, I don't, you know, I just, maybe, maybe Suri's never been to Christmas in the park. Maybe, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe he's never been to an event in Auckland that's had more than more than 200,000 people there. Maybe he wasn't down at the viaduct in 2003 when we won the America's Cup. Uh, Mr Speaker, you know, maybe before he was Prime Minister he didn't go to the test matches where, where uh, Eden Park was full. I don't know what sort of different world the Prime Minister lives in, but when you tell Kiwis there's a party on, they come. He told Kiwis there was a party on and they came and he said he was surprised, uh, Mr Speaker, and I just think it is exceptionally sad. And what was sadder still was to see that he was gobsmacked, he was gobsmacked that they took his advice. Well, every now and again, every now and again, people will take the Prime Minister's advice when he invites them to come to a party. Uh, Mr Speaker? Well, well, Mr. Mr. Speaker, overall, I want to say to Martin Stedden and to Jock Hobbs, who um, was there but unacknowledged by the Prime Minister on Friday night, Jock Hobbs at the ground but not mentioned by the Prime Minister on Friday night, I want to ta say to Martin Stedden and his team, congratulations for the job that you've done. They've done a damn fine job putting together things uh, around the cup, the rugby, the related things for the teams. It's gone exceptionally smoothly. I want, I want, I want to say to the people who have been associated with the cultural festival associated with the Rugby World Cup that they too have been doing a damn fine job and congratulations to them. I want to say, though, to the people who are in charge, uh, in, and in particular the Minister for the Rugby World Cup, uh, the Minister of Economic Development, uh, Mr Brownlee, uh, and, and his team, that the business programme around the Rugby World Cup is shocking. It is weaker, much, much weaker than around the America's Cup in 2003, notwithstanding uh, having a lot longer to plan for it, uh, Mr Speaker. But... I want to get back to saying, in the end, we're going to be judged by this, and it is very, very clear that the Prime Minister is a Prime Minister who is happy to pose for photos. He is happy to take credit. I mean, I've heard no acknowledgement from the Prime Minister, uh, nothing crediting Helen Clark for going to Dublin, going to Korea via Dublin to actually get this. Not a word from him giving credit to the previous government for getting it, but he was taking all of the credit. But when it turned to custard, where did he go? He hid away and left it for the hapless Minister Murray McCulley to front on the issue. Uh, he said, oh, well, well, Mr. And, and they said they weren't into finger pointing. They said they weren't into finger pointing. I tell you what, how does, how does Len Brown feel now? How does Len Brown feel now if, if John Key said he's not into finger pointing? He pointed the finger directly at Len Brown. And what about, what about the poor people who were sick and trying to get off the trains? The people who were sick and needed to get off the trains, he called them drunks. He called them, the Prime Minister called the pregnant woman who needed to get off the, off the train to go to the toilet a drunk. That's what he did. And, Mr Speaker, that is, that is the sort of approach that the Prime Minister has been taking. And, Mr Speaker, we, are, we, we have, I think, uh, you know, we have a weekend this weekend, which is not quite as big, but the following weekend we've got uh, the All Blacks vs France game at Eden Park. That's going to be big. But 
the quarterfinal. Sorry.